In this video, we address several ancillary services in microgrids, which are connected to the upstream external grid. The main learning objectives will fall under three main questions. Firstly, what are the most important ancillary services for microgrids during the grid connected mode? Secondly, how is the frequency controlled in grid connected mode? Thirdly, what are various voltage problems in microgrids? If the microgrid is connected to an external grid, then the operation of microgrid is largely affected by the quality of the grid. In general, the external grid can be either strong or weak. In this course, we call a grid strong when it dominantly and solidly controls both voltage and frequency at the connection point. We call a grid weak when both voltage and frequency are not properly set and controlled by the grid. Note that if the grid would be weak in such a way that it severely affects the operation of a microgrid, that can be the case, for instance, for a rural remote village, then to avoid the damage on the equipment, the microgrid might be disconnected from the weak grid. During the grid connected mode, microgrids can support the frequency. However, if their aggregated size would be relatively small compared to the large conventional power plants, then their impact on the frequency would be negligible. On the one hand, if the connection of the microgrid to the external grid is strong, then the grid dominantly controls the frequency of the microgrid. In other words, the rest of the components would only follow the reference frequency signal which is set by the grid. On the other hand, if the grid is weak, then the microgrid components might also affect the frequency. If needed, microgrids are able to support the grid by the provision of frequency control. This service is provided in various time scales. In the dispatch during normal conditions, the frequency regulation, such as primary frequency control, acts within several seconds in a decentralized way. The regulating reserve, which is the secondary control, works within several minutes in a centralized manner, while load following or tertiary control is activated manually within several hours. In the dispatch during the contingency events, non-spinning reserves a spinning reserves and supplemental reserves are used on a much longer time frame to cope with frequency control at different power levels. If the grid is strong, then it dominantly controls the voltage. However, if the grid is weak, then the voltage might not be adequately controlled and kept within allowed limits in a microgrid. For instance, the voltage stack problem may occur particularly when the level of loads is high. If the grid is weak, also high penetration rates of PV units or other renewables can lead to unacceptable voltage swells. Another possible issue with voltage profile is the three-phase unbalance, as it is shown in the figure. Unbalanced voltage may occur due to different penetration rates of single phase renewables like photovoltaic solar across different three phases of a microgrid. The unbalanced voltage can also occur due to uneven distribution of single phase loads across three phases in microgrids. Another possible issue with voltage is harmonics, which is defined as voltage signals with relative value to the fundamental component of the signal. Harmonics can create many problems in microgrids, like increased power losses. With an ever-increasing penetration rates of electronically interfaced units like PV solar, it is expected that the problems associated with the harmonics will be aggravated in microgrids in future. To mitigate these problems, therefore, there will be a need for additional control schemes or fine-tuned filters. We can also address more voltage issues within microgrids. For instance, within a short period of time, voltage transient instabilities can occur due to the faults. As it is shown in the figure, when the voltage drops after the occurrence of the fault, 
then the mercury shall be able to go through the fault during this time period and maintains its stability that is also called low voltage right through that typically takes for about few hundreds of milliseconds. If the voltage does not recover during this time, then the microgrid eventually shuts down. There are more ancillary services which we can mention for the microgrids during the grid connected mode. As an example, here we analyze a congestion problem in a distribution feeder. The distribution feeder is characterized by the connection to the main grid here on top of the figure and by loads like, for example, houses represented by triangles. The figure represents a, a heat map that shows power congestion in a distribution system. A congestion is shown with a red color in the bottom. Yellow and green color instead are representing in the rest of the map where the distribution system shows low or no congestion in the lines. As it is shown in the figure, the lines of a distribution feeder become congested during the load peak hours. If the load of new technologies like electric vehicles is added to this distribution feeder, and as it can be seen, the line becomes heavily congested for the case that electric vehicles are charged in an uncontrolled manner. In order to alleviate the congestion problem, new loads like electric vehicles are controlled in a more smart way, as it can be seen in the figure. In practice, a portion of electric vehicle loads will be shifted from load peak hours to off peak hours. Well, in this video, we addressed a good set of ancillary services of microgrids in grid connected mode where their operation with a strong or weak grid was analyzed. We discussed that the frequency and voltage are dominantly controlled by the grid when it is strong. Also, we introduced three common levels of frequency control, namely primary, secondary, and tertiary control. Finally, we addressed several possible problems with voltage, like harmonics, and transient stability with the congestion of the lines.